Hey, thanks a lot for the information on that poacher. Here's my card. If you have any more information, just give me a call. This is your medicine for Gwenny. If she doesn't feel any better, here's my card. Give me a call. Hi, I'm Frank Flush. I'm here about the toilet. Oh, okay. Frank Flush, Southeast Plumbing. If it won't go down, I'll come around. It's a nice slogan. You know, if animals had business cards, it'd make it a lot easier to understand where they work and what they do. <laughs> Black Bear, Chief Berry Picker, U.S. National Forest. I never gripe when they're ripe. Moose, Vegetation Removal Specialist, Swamp City, USA. If my feet are wet, I'm not through yet. Well, that ought to do it. I got places to go, things to do. Okay, thanks. Places to go, things to do. That's just like wildlife. The places they go is called their habitat, and the things they do is called their niche. A habitat is made up of four things that all animals need. Food, water, shelter, and space. When an animal lives in a place that has the right amounts of all these things, then it is living in a healthy habitat. Let's take a closer look. Food, water, shelter, and space. The first three are pretty easy to understand, right? You have to eat, drink, and have a place to stay. But what about space? Do you need space? We all need space, although some of us require more than others. A spider would only need a small area to build a web, maybe in your backyard. But what about a cougar? It requires a lot more space than a spider, even as much as 120 square miles. Too many animals in the same space is not a good idea either. Large numbers of animals may damage the habitat. Or if animals are too crowded, they pass on diseases to each other. So space is as important to wildlife as food, water, and shelter in creating the perfect habitat. Simply put, healthy habitat equals healthy wildlife. Loss of habitat across our planet is the single biggest reason we have animals in danger of extinction. If an animal loses its habitat, why can't it just move over to a new one? Good question, because the food that grows here is different than the food that grows here. An animal may be able to eat this, but not this. Even if an animal could find the exact same habitat, there are probably some animals just like it already living there. They may not want to share their food, water, shelter, and space! Okay, but what if an animal finds good habitat and there aren't a lot of other animals there? Then it can move over, right? Well, how far does it have to go? If an animal wants to get from here, to other good habitat here, it may have to travel through an area with really poor habitat, or none at all. It may not make it because there is nothing for it to eat, no water or shelter. Today, that is becoming a serious problem called habitat fragmentation. One answer is to protect habitat with corridors, or strips of good habitat linking larger areas. How did the habitat get, what was that word again? Fragmented? Well, there are lots of reasons. In some places, new plants called invasive species appear. These are plants that were never in an area before. They replace the native plants that animals need. This wetland habitat has lots of cattails, which are great food for many kinds of wildlife. But an invasive plant called purple loosestrife has taken over and wiped out the native cattail. Unfortunately, very few animals in this wetland eat purple loosestrife, so the animals lose. Another reason wild animals lose habitat is that we use the habitat for ourselves. As human populations grow, we replace animal habitat with people habitat. Yes, people need habitat too, just like wildlife. But we need to find a balance where both can live. 
But some animals seem like they can live just about anywhere, like geese or raccoons. I see them all the time. It's true. Some animals can live just about anywhere. Some animals can live in more places because they adapt more easily. That means they can eat many kinds of food and tolerate different weather and conditions. Coyotes are a great example of this. They are one of the most adaptable creatures in the animal kingdom. It seems like they can live just about anywhere. But other animals, like a manatee, require very specific habitats. These are the ones in the most trouble. If their habitat disappears, so do they. Do you know where manatees live? Only here, along the Florida coastline, where they feed on underwater plants. Or how about this one? It lives here on top of the world. Polar bears inhabit the frozen Arctic, where wind and currents create cracks in the ice. This habitat is perfect for polar bears because they hunt the seals that surface in these cracks to breathe. And this one? Do you know where the giant panda lives? Right here. Only in a small area of China, because that is where its food source is, bamboo. So you see, some animals have very special habitats. And if we lose them, we lose the animals. I mean, you can't move a polar bear to the desert or a manatee to the mountains. If there is lots of space, can two or more different kind of animals live in the same habitat? Sure, but here's the tricky part. They'd have to have a different niche or job there. You see, if two animals needed the exact same food, water, shelter, and space, and had the same job, one would outcompete the other because they're both doing the same thing. Hey, isn't that your job? Nature doesn't like to waste talent, so it doesn't allow two animals doing the exact same job to live in the exact same place. Some hawks and owls occupy the same type of habitat, but they do have different jobs because one works the night shift while the other the day shift. Lots of animals can share good habitat if they do different things there. Some eat plants, some eat animals, some live in the ground, some live in the trees. Well, you get the idea. And not only do they all live together, they all depend on each other. Think of your neighborhood as your habitat. Don't all the moms and dads have a different niche? Some work at the library and help you check out books. Some work at the hospital and fix you up. Some fix up your house. You depend on all of them. But what would happen if they all did the same job? What would happen if they all worked at the library? Who would work at the hospital? And who would fix up your house? See, we need to have people doing different jobs. It makes our lives easier. What would happen if just one job was vacant and no one was there to do it? What if your toilet overflowed and there were no plumbers? So you see, every job is important. It works the same way with wildlife and habitat. If one animal is gone that has an important job or niche, it can mess up the whole habitat. Bald eagles are great at cleaning up carrion. That's a word for dead animals. Imagine what it would be like without them or other scavengers cleaning up the animals that have died. We'd have dead animals everywhere. As usual, nature knows best, which is why wildlife lives in specific habitats with specific niches all over the planet. If we can help protect habitat, the animals will take care of the rest. After all, they have a job to do, just like you. Cool Kid, Mosquito Eliminator, Outdoors USA. Bite if you wish, but then I'll squish.
Thank you.